Hi, this is Dick Rochefort, pilot trainer for the PA-46 Alibu Mirage and Meridian aircraft matrix as well. And uh, you're with, uh, with me at flight level 250 in uh, November 40 Hotel Papa, which is a model 2000 Mirage, Malibu Mirage, uh, S-Tech equipped, full three axis autopilot, altitude pre-select, color weather radar, and uh, a pressurization system that's as good as it gets. This uh, equipment is standard in the PA-46, and I encourage you, if you've not had an opportunity to fly a pressurized single uh, with the qualities of this aircraft, zero off. Charlie, you to, uh, one take the opportunity to do so as soon as you can. 1,000 and more port window arc site. Uh, today we're in cruise already. We're set up for 70% uh, 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 power, as you can see on the transit coral. Layer. We should be through it at 1,000. Uh, we're uh, running 20. Hotel Pop Contact Albuquerque Center on 132.8. Yeah, 132.8, 40 Hotel Papa. Thanks so long. Excuse me for a minute here. Albuquerque Tech 42, flight level 330, and we got the traffic. Patrol. Switched over here, get checked in. Yeah, center, it's uh, Malibu 40, Hotel Papa, flight level 250. Center 40, Hotel Papa, I was under. All right, there it is. Since we're in the flight levels, of course, there is no altimeter given because everybody said it 2.9 or 9 or 2, but then you probably already knew that. Um, all right, so uh, the topic today is uh, flight planning and route. In this particular case, the challenge I had have is moving the aircraft from uh, Southern California, Gillespie Field, uh, near San Diego, uh, over to Road, Asheville, Road, North Road, Carolina. Road and uh, to that end, uh, I filed initially uh, to, uh, because of the weather and the fuel range of the aircraft, I filed originally to Amarillo, which is on the back side of the front that we're uh, creeping up on here. And I plan to land there in light rain and get fuel. Now, the weather's moved. I had a little late start today. Uh, as usual, a few delays on the departure, but uh, not uh, not terrible. And um, so we, you know, we got up, got level, noticed uh, a very complimentary ground speed, about 30 knots more than anticipated, and uh, uh, so we're plugging along here, good. So I decided that if I could find a first fuel stop that was within range of out of. Uh, Asheville, then I would, and I could get in there with decent weather, say less than uh, 1,002, uh, I would go ahead and stretch the first flight. Now, being careful with that, I say stretch it, I don't mean being dangerous with the fuel. Uh, this, you know, running out of fuel would be uh, very embarrassing at the least, and possibly downright dangerous. I certainly don't want to do that. But, so the trick to it is, is to uh, take on as much fuel as you can stand, get up, get level, and then look at it again, and that's what I did. Uh, here we are uh, now an hour and 50 minutes from uh, Wiley Post, still with 75 gallons roughly of fuel. Uh, this, uh, this is a very favorable situation, I, uh, but so I didn't want to land with all that fuel, and I knew if I could go another 200 miles or so toward Asheville, I could probably uh, plan on getting into Asheville directly from Wiley Post. And so uh, I, I have the two GPSs set up here. Uh, the first one cross-filling automatically to the number two. And the number two cross-filling manually to the number one. This way, if I want to, I can make a I could do a what if down here. Oh, for example, Delta, I can put for uh, two zero zero. Asheville Delta, in here. Delta 2115, Asheville, Redwood Falls, climb and maintain, flat level 240. 
Director Redwood Falls, and uh, if, you know, uh, we know that the wind is going to stay the same, and uh, I mean, if we know that, I believe we know that. In fact, if anything, it should pick up a little bit. I'll and show you in a minute Osprey how Woods I know that. 10, uh, we can uh, we can plan on getting to Asheville in three hours, so uh, that's well within the range of this aircraft. Uh, you know, uh, particularly since it's equipped with the uh, tip tanks, what, what, uh, it's an STC, it's not really a tip tank, this is a wet wing. And the cap is designed, uh, when it's filled to the, to the limit, including the dihedral of the wing, it'll take 60, six zero gallons of usable fuel. But if we look now, we see it out there on the very end of the wing, we see another cap. Now that's an aftermarket, STC. It's simply another hole drilled in the wet wing that allows for that air pocket in the dihedral to accept 10 more gallons of fuel once the inner cap is on. All right, so with that in mind, we have that, of course, on both sides. We now have uh, 70 gallons a side, even though the ga gauge is only going to show 60 a side. Uh, what that means is we'll just burn at 15 minute intervals, burn left and right until the fuel begins to show on the gauge. And then assuming the fuel gauges are operating correctly, and they are, um, then uh, there you go, we're, we're good to go. So knowing that we have uh, 70 and change, 70 gallons, we're burning uh, 21 and a half an hour. Uh, let's say we were uh, uh, two hours from Wiley Post, we're an hour and 50 minutes. So with vectors, that's about right. We need uh, 21, climb main 45 two, gallons eight, to get the Wiley Post. Two, eight, zero, uh, two, and then to that, we need to add a reserve. So uh, uh, certainly uh, a 25 gallon reserve is adequate. And today we have uh, uh, 70 plus. We have uh, uh, probably 28, uh, maybe 30 gallon reserve, which is plenty. And, and that's considering that, uh, that the weather would be IFR, not low IFR, but IFR. I'd want more if it were low Osprey IFR. Osprey 1 0 Albuquerque. Albuquerque, uh, Osprey 1 0. But it's not, it's VFR. Osprey 1 0 Albuquerque. At the field, there is a cloud cover, but uh, the field is VFR, and there, everything around it's VFR, and with the exception of uh, some to the south. Higher, so uh, this is, uh, I believe, uh, a reasonable risk along, uh, and will save us time and therefore money. So, uh, uh, so we got three zero, uh, one, not that I don't love to fly, but uh, to 12, uh, we just, uh, prefer to I just uh, prefer to uh, uh, operate as professional on. No as need I can. Auto and, the this is, uh, and so now uh, we've zero changed zero the flight plan with center. We told them we're not going to Amarillo, we're going to Wiley Post, and they they, uh, we owe them a, a reason for the change, so I told them about the wonderful yeah, winds and service. my yeah, interest in using the fuel on board. So they almost yeah, never, well, they would never say uh, no. Uh, 8 Charlie Kilo, descending uh, maintain 1 6,000, south uh, south So we're on our way. Now the only other hitch is I was pre-filed out of Amarillo uh, for the next leg, and, uh, and of course there's no way to cancel that really, it just, just goes away. Uh, but I did refile using the high altitude uh, radio frequency. And remember, H. Charlie Kilo advised me of the uh, weather notice of town. Which I didn't know offhand. And uh, so H. Charlie Kilo, I do have the weather at Tulsa. But I did call and they gave remember me that H. information. Kilo, right. So you can see where I've amended the flight plan. A little chicken scratch here, but um, uh, there's my new flight plan to, to uh, PWA. For the a correction uh, from PWA yeah, Charlie Kilo, clear direct to uh, flight level 250 over to yeah, Asheville. Kilo, Three hours en route, five hours fuel, and then same as above for the rest of it. Alternate's going to be Tango, uh, Yankee, Sierra. Uh, and it's it's true, you don't need an alternate at all times, but uh, it's it's nice to have one Remember in mind, Kilo, Charlie, whether you uh, file it or not. So that's how we we can do that. Uh, it's also interesting to know that, um, you know, if you've lined up rental cars and or hotels at the fuel stop and that kind of thing, why uh, there's a, a very clever way that I use. It's, I don't know that it's written down anywhere, but uh, if you go to your, uh, your map and uh, let's say you want to uh, 
you you, ha you weren't planning on going to PWA, and you want to get a phone call in to them, uh, go to your uh, your flight directory wherever you have it. I, I have it here on a an Era 560. Uh, sorry, you can't see that because of the uh, sun glare. I can see it just fine, but uh, let's see if I can get that. So this has waypoint information and everything I need. So I can look up a frequency for an airport directly below me, but that's really all you need is to know uh, some place below you, uh, Unicom, like Santa Fe. Nice folks at Santa Fe. If you get a chance to stop in there, it's a beautiful city. Consider the Inn of the Anasazi. It's a fabulous hotel. Bring a checkbook. Did you have a question and, uh, for me? Or, uh, uh, the winter is just absolutely a stunning place with uh, mesquite wood know. fires burning everywhere. And, uh, Remember, great artwork and really fine FBO there, nice people. And uh, they got a new outdoor patio if you're there in the spring or fall. So check that out. But anyway, if we called down to Santa Fe and said, say Santa Fe, Remember, uh, got a phone number for you. I wonder if you could make a call. And one for us. Of that Charlie Kilo. And then tell them you want to call PWA, uh, Wiley Post, and uh, tell them you're coming and uh, ask for a quick turn, a ham sandwich, whatever you want. And uh, and I'm sure they'll make it. I've never been told no. And then uh, just, you know, wait on the secondary radio until they call you back and say it's done. And there you go. Uh, sometimes you can save a call out. If you're flying late at night and uh, the FBO is going to close and you're running late, you can get a message to them. You're 20 minutes out or an hour and 20 minutes out. Contact Albuquerque Center, one, two, and they'll uh, point five today. maybe wait for you. I've had that happen. Delta 2115. So um, it's also useful to check those uh, smaller airports uh, if they're not 24-hour service, check them, Center, because sometimes they close early. Romeo uh, 4, you know, they're usually family-run. If there's a family wedding going on, they're going to close the FBO, and they have no way of telling you that. Roger, the rest on altimeter uh, 3010. But and trust me, if you get down in Tucum Carry and there's nobody around, uh, you're going to need to drive uh, somewhere to get fuel. You're yeah. not going to be able to get out of there. Remember 4, Romeo, Charlie, Roger. You can yes, you are. Now I know that. Okay, well, this is uh, Dick Rochford. That's uh, my fuel planning and uh, change of plan uh, scenario. That's how I would normally do it. Uh, in this case, we did it for good weather. It would be equally useful if the weather at our destination were bad and we wanted to carefully plan uh, a secondary alternate or something. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to do careful planning, but uh, if you spend too much time planning, then you get wedded to the idea, and uh, you're in then incapable or inexperienced at doing uh, accurate, quick planning with the avionics on board, which is one of the reasons why flying could be safer today uh, because of these uh, techniques and this equipment. Well, that's all for now. This is Dick Rochford. Have a nice day. Fly safely. Train off. Center Mooney, November 1306 Whiskey is with you. Uh, 